I'll pick up the fruit in an hour. <laughs> Is that Joanne Bologna? Must be Joanne. <laughs> Bring home a half a pound of bologna or something. <laughs> and when I, when I got that call, there was no even thinking about waiting or deciding. We, we're doing it. I don't care what we have to do. We're doing it because they respond to the same request, whether it's the chamber or the arts or any human service organization here in Dutchess County. And I am so pleased to be standing here in Adams, putting together, helping to put together an important announcement that will affect all of us, all of us. Maybe not directly, but somehow, some way, it'll affect us, our friends, and our families. We need to be aware of what we can be doing to make this world a better place. And I couldn't ask for a finer example to set the tone than to bring up my very good friend, Mr. Patrick Adams from Adams Ferry Farms. Pat? Thanks a lot, Charlie. Really appreciate you pulling this together. As Charlie mentioned, I want to give a special thanks to Angela Adams because she helped get everything together. This all started by Angela bringing to me a request for us to help out the New York uh, Organ Donor Network. And being a recipient uh, about a year ago in September, I had a heart transplant. I said, how could I, we gotta do all we can do because I wouldn't be here without this. Um, so Angela spearheaded everyone and did a tremendous job. Giving accolades, I want to make sure I acknowledge my wife, Barb, because again, I wouldn't be here without her, because she walked me through that. I'm sure five years ago, I would have never known I'd be in this spot, but you know, your call to action to make sure you use what brief luck you've had to pass on to others so they can you have the same fortune down the road. So organ donor is something especially uh, dear to, to my heart. Uh, I guess to yeah. your heart. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and Angela's thought too was to do it at this time because Christmas is a time of giving. So she thought giving uh, the organ and giving the gift of life is the perfect gift anyone can give. So it all just fit together perfectly. And I can't say enough thank yous to everyone who's here to just say you know what we're about to have put into, into action. So thank you. Dr. Caldwell, I guess you're next on the podium. Exactly. How about a round of applause? <laughs> so it's about organ uh, donor. You don't have to write a check. And uh, when you give, you won't even feel a thing. <laughs> Think about it. Your life will continue on in some way, shape, or form. So we need to find out the technicalities. You know, I looked up in my uh, Chamber of Commerce Encyclopedia, who better than to bring up the Health Commission? So without any further delay, please welcome my very good friend, Dr. Michael Caldwell, our Health Commissioner of Dutchess County. Mike. Well, good afternoon, it, it really is uh, great to be here. Uh, in this setting at this time of year. I don't think it's an accident that we're surrounded by uh, poinsettias uh, that give us that whole sense of a renewal, this holiday season, this giving season, the, uh, the new year. Um, we've made a lot of progress since I was uh, a resident at Elmhurst Hospital in the cardiac care unit when I uh, had to be with a family who uh, their, their dad had, had died, but yet he was still there. His organs were still there. I, I was having to go, unfortunately, through brain death protocol. The family, family was really struggling. They didn't know what to do. I remember his daughter was holding his hand, saying, Daddy, I know you're going to make it. We postponed the wedding so you can walk me down the aisle. I'll never forget that. But what I had to do then seeing that scene was to sit with the family and say, I don't think there's hope, I'm sorry. I, I really think that you can make a gift to, to others 
would you think about donating organs? Now, we've made a lot of progress since then. Doctors are no longer in New York State put in that position when they're saying, well, I think your relative has passed, and by the way, give me your organs. Uh, it, it's a conflict of interest. It, we recognized that back then. It doesn't happen now. We have a system now where, where people uh, who are <coughs> specialists in this go in and talk with the family specifically. So you could talk to your doctors about your loved one. You could talk about organ donation separately. But all of this could have been avoided had we had some notice of, of what, were, what did that patient want. What, what were their wishes? We didn't know. They never talked about it. Well, today is a day I'm asking all of you in this room just to start and to know that you can make your voices heard. If you don't want to, you don't have to. But let me tell you an expression I see on bumper stickers when I drive around the community. It says, don't take your organs to heaven. Lord knows we need them right here on earth. It's true. It's true. And, and whatever your thoughts are about organ donation, you're not sure, learn about it. We're here today. We've got people who can talk to you about it. We, we have people here who are so thankful that there are people who do donate organs. We have more of a need for organs than there are. I had many patients at Mount Sinai who I had to talk to and help them and their families waiting on transplant lists, heart transplants, liver transplants, kidney transplants. They didn't all make it. It was, it was tough. We, we got a call, maybe a match. Everyone was so happy. And then it just didn't work out. We need more, more good stories. We need more great outcomes, and we can do it. We really can. So thank you. Thank you so much to Adams and the Chamber, because the fact of the matter is the Department of Public Health, we, we are just there to educate and to give you some ideas, but it, it's every single business, every single person who helps to better and promote public health in our community every day. So Mr. Adams, for you to tell your personal story, which not everybody can do and want to share, and to be a symbol means so much, so much to all of us. I, I, I know, and I know a lot of families know what you know. And if we could just get more people to hear that story, which we're trying to do today, more people will check off that box. More people will check off that box. We need people to check off that box. We need people to make their choice, hopefully make a positive choice and make it known. And now my understanding is, and, and the county clerk will, will back me up on this, that now that the box must be checked. You, you must not, one way or the other, you must ask. It no longer says, oh, well, don't worry about that question. No, every New Yorker now has to face that question, all of us. Will you be an organ donor? Will you? Please. Please learn about it. I hope you say yes. Educate your family. Mr. Adams is here. He'll talk to anybody that you want. So thank you. Thank you so much. We are really so indebted to you. And thank you, Charlie, for your continued leadership because it is our corporate partners that make the difference in a better community. Thank you. Thank you. The next person is going to show you how easy it is to do. Our county clerk, Mr. Brad Kevin. Brad? Uh, so I want to thank all of you for being here, and I want to recognize John Nansen, who is here. Where's John? John. John is a volunteer with the Organ Donor Network, and he, at least once a month, if not twice a month, is in Dutchess County uh, DMV, actively signing people up as they come in the door, explaining the process. And what I'm always struck by is how grateful he is He's always saying, thank you for letting me do this. And again, it's us who should say, should say to you, thank you for doing it, John, because uh, without you and people like you, we wouldn't have the success that we have. I'm fortunate in the County Clerks Association, we have a president this year, Paul Pitt from Rockin County, who made it a focus of his presidency, it's a one-year term, to increase organ donation through the County Clerk's Office. And we do that two ways, one through the Department of Motor, Motor Vehicles, 
we're the most accessible way to sign up um, when you come in to renew your license or apply for a license or change your license. Uh, it's a question on every form. And uh, we find that just by asking that question, we get better participation. Uh, New York State's number 47 in the uh, nation in terms of participation, something that we are really uh, dedicated to, to uh, increasing, going lower on that list. Uh, New York State likes to be number one, and we're going to try to do that. Uh, DMV a few years ago did an um, analysis of strategic plan for the next five years. And incredibly, part of that analysis said we're going to get out of the organ donation business. We're going to leave it to the Department of Health. It's not part of the core mission at DMV. We're fortunate with the new commissioner, Barbara Fiala, who I represent in Dutchess County, that she's renewed that commitment to organ donation and renewed a commitment to making the form um, a yes or no question, not just you can skip right by it. So I'm thankful for the commissioner. Thankful, thankful for uh, Paul Pepperado, but also especially for the do donation network and for the donors. Uh, it really does make a difference. I think if, uh, I think you'd be surprised as you walk around every day through this store or through your life, how many recipients are standing by you that you just don't know about. So, Charlie, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to publicly thank you for allowing someone to give me those special plates. <laughs> I can't pass red lights anymore. I can't cut people off. I can't do anything. I have to drive like a normal human being. Thanks for that. <coughs> I'd like to bring up James Paradis. What is it? Pardis. James Pardis, and I apologize <coughs> for mis mispronouncing your name. He's the Vice President of Marketing and communications for the New York Organ Donor Network. James? Well, it's, uh, it's a real pleasure uh, to be here today. I've been uh, with the New York Organ Donor Network for about two years. Uh, the New York Organ Donor ne Network, excuse me, is the um, federally designated organ procurement organization with the second largest in the country and we're responsible for, for facilitating organ donation in the New York metropolitan area. And in my two years, um, I've never been a part of an event like this. So uh, my first job here is just to say kudos to Dutchess County, to everybody here in this room. Thank you. This is a special event, and uh, you deserve a round of applause. So thank you. <laughs> and uh, this was already said, but I think I need to point it out again. Thank you in particular to, uh, to the Adams family uh, and also a man who's working behind the scenes. He was recognized a second ago, John Nansen, who's a star volunteer for the New York Organ Donor Network. He's a recipient himself, and he is one of the reasons why we're here today. He knocks on doors. He knocked on the, the doors of uh, the Adams family, uh, and they gladly open their doors. And, and I think to a certain extent, John uh, is deserving of a lot of credit for, for us here gathered here today to discuss this important issue. So thank you, John. So uh, efforts like this are sorely needed here in New York. Uh, a study was done back in 2010 that, that documented that uh, over 80% of New Yorkers support organ donation. But yet, just 20% of us are registered. So there's a gap, and we need to fill that gap. And there's, but there's a gap of opportunity. Uh, the sentiment is there. This is just about now taking action. And events like this help us inspire people to take action. I think it was mentioned just a moment ago that, that New York is 48th or 47th, depending on the, the numbers you look at, uh, in the country with regard to the percentage of people registered to become organ donors. Well, I think as New Yorkers, as prideful, prideful New Yorkers, we all can do better than that. That's unacceptable. We need to do something about it. And we can. Uh, uh, but more importantly than our pride, uh, there are lives uh, at stake here. 10,000 New Yorkers today are waiting for an organ. Uh, and every 15 hours, unfortunately, one of them will die. So there's a shortage of organs. That's why we're here today. Get the word out. Get people registered so we can uh, supply the organs necessary so that we can save lives. So I encourage people everywhere in this room and beyond to learn more about organ donation uh, and, and when you learn more about organ donation, one thing you'll find I think that's pretty, uh, that's pretty special and interesting. Uh, it's not just about the recipients. Uh, they have beautiful stories and they will move you. And every day, thankfully, I hear those stories and they move me. 
but it's also about the stories of the donor families, those who lost a loved one, but, uh, but they have something that, to, to hang their hat on. Uh, they're very prideful, uh, and they're peaceful, and there's even joy when they can say that their loved ones saved lives. So donation isn't just about the recipients, although that's such an important and special part of the story, but also remember the donors and the donor families. So I will encourage you, and I'll give you a little, a little plug. If you want to learn more about organ donation, visit SaveLivesNewYork.org. Visit, learn more, and hopefully you'll register. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to come back and close, but I want to bring up uh, someone very special to, to me and to everyone here, a person that uh, has uh, done an admirable job in a very, very tough time. Congratulations on the bond rating. Ladies and gentlemen, our county executive, would you please welcome Marcus Molino. Yeah, we were happy with the bond rating. Yeah, downgrade would have been bad. Yeah. So holding steady is good. <laughs> Hold it steady. Consistency is okay. Steady and Foolish straight. Consistency is not okay. Um, I, uh, it was uh, uh, the uh, mid-90s, I was a village mayor uh, in Tivoli, and uh, then President uh, Bill Clinton, along with the former President George H.W. Bush, signed uh, what was at the time called the First Family Pledge, a national commitment among uh, our national leaders to commit to organ and tissue donation. He then uh, launched what became, prior to uh, the year 2000, what was uh, called a mayor a Millennium Mayorathon, got it? Millenn Millennium Mayorathon, the, uh, an effort to have mayors from across the country visit other places across the country and encourage organ and tissue donation. And I uh, participated in that program, visited 110 cities uh, in Texas over the course of uh, two weeks where and we participated in, in efforts like this to encourage uh, organ and, and tissue donation. And uh, of those 110 cities, I still remember visiting a municipality right outside of uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, and there was a group, probably about this large, of uh, 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 Texans. Uh, they all spoke a little different than I did, but apparently I had the accent. <laughs> and um, I was uh, joined by a pastor, a, a, so a Southern Baptist pastor and his wife. And um, we gave a presentation, as you just have. And um, the pastor's wife wanted to speak. And I said to the, to the woman, why don't you come on up and tell folks what you're thinking. And she looked at this audience and she said, as only a Texan could say, well, Y'all can't take them with you. And that was the story of uh, <laughs> So um, organ and tissue donation has been something that uh, uh, has been of uh, uh, importance to me. Uh, my very dear friend sadly uh, passed away this year, uh, the uh, former assistant minority leader of the state assembly, Jim, uh, Jim Conti, uh, was a, 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 a recipient and uh, really spearheaded major initiatives at the state legislature and thanks to his commitment and the commitment of the state legislature and expansion of the registry and the uh, progress we've seen over the last couple of years has come from a, a state that recognizes that being 47th or 48th in everything uh, isn't so good. So that at least in one area we can see significant enhancement and improvement and this state uh, has, been, uh, uh, has been doing just that. Uh, whether it's the Jewish tradition uh, this time of year of light or the Christian tradition this time of year of life this is all uh, a season of hope and an opportunity for us uh, not only to exchange gifts, uh, but to exchange hope. And uh, uh, if there's a better story than the one you heard uh, from Pat Adams, I don't, I don't know it. But what's most important is that we have a critical opportunity to make a significant difference in the life of so many others. And as that uh, minister's wife said, regarding your organs and tissues, you, you all can't take them with you. So please, not only uh, check the box yes, but have the conversation. What's vitally important is that your family knows your wishes. So when confronted with an emergency or in a, uh, a, a critical situation, they can tell a physician or a physician in a, in a place maybe that you don't call your own uh, that, in fact, my family member uh, is a donor. Uh, so have that conversation included in your living wills, included in uh, a power attorney in your, in your will. Uh, make sure uh, healthcare proxies know your desire, your, your interest to donate. You want to be sure uh, that you have the conversation and that everyone associated with you knows that you're a donor and at the same time you encourage them to be a donor. Now Charlie, we have two uh, special announcements we want to make and in order to do that I'm going to, uh, actually I'm going to call Evan Yeager up. He's not going to make any announcement, he's just going to stand next to me because he's, you don't know this. 
I always like to, I like to make news. <laughs> um, I'm resigning and Evan's gonna be county executive. <laughs> <laughs> Thought it'd be a heck of a lot easier to manage a baseball team than yes. <laughs> Uh, on behalf of Dutchess Stadium, which is uh, one of uh, our finest uh, 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 county parks, it is in fact a county park, and the New York Penn League champions, uh, the Hudson Valley Renegades, Dutchess Stadium and the Hudson Valley Renegades would like to announce today uh, that in fact uh, one night during uh, this upcoming season will be an organ and tissue donation uh, night and event, and the Renegades uh, uh, will make sure that that happens. So yes. congratulations. <laughs> In order to keep the uh, ball rolling, that was a very bad, very bad pun. Uh, on behalf of the uh, people of Dutchess County, on behalf of Dutchess County government, uh, Pat, why don't you come on up? I'd like to present this to you. And Charlie, why don't you come on up? Brad, um, join us. Uh, I really commend the county clerk. Uh, he really has done a tremendous job. And really to put a focus on organ and tissue donation has been uh, wonderful. Representatives from the, uh, you want, why don't you come up as well? Uh, on behalf of uh, Dutchess County government, on behalf of the people of Dutchess County, we proudly join with all of you, uh, not only this important day today and the continued effort to encourage organ and tissue donation, but we declare December 15th as Organ uh, Donor Awareness Day in Dutchess County. I encourage you to talk about it, I encourage you to check that box, yes, and uh, become a donor yourself. So God bless, and let's uh, make, a, make a difference in the life of so many. Thank you. The 15th is Saturday. It is. It's right here. It is. Uh, <laughs> think local first is right. Donate local. Uh, all four Adams locations will have representatives from uh, the uh, Oregon Donor Network. Uh, they will be here all day. And that's the Wappingers, the Kingston, Newburgh, and Poughkeepsie locations. We have press kits available for anybody that would like to take them back. I would uh, encourage all of us to... Uh, Think about December 15th as a day of giving. We already are thinking of giving, but this is something very, very special. Something that we probably have never really thought much about. And if each of us can just think about it and be serious about it, uh, I think we can make a difference, even with this group here. Now, Pat, I want to thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to be here. I don't know how many years ago, I guess it was about 15 or 20 years ago, I was watching TV, you know, that box, people <laughs> still watch it. And uh, it was a special, and uh, this, it was a singing special. I can't get a copy of this, I can't find it. I Googled it, I searched it, can't find it. Nowhere to be found. But Joe Cocker came out in his own way, and he sang a song called Thank God, standing here today. All of us have to think about that song. Thank God I'm standing here today. And Pat, we're so pleased that you're standing came in. She's with the American Heart Association. My good friend, Evan Yeager, uh, he's on our board. You know, I have to tell you a secret. Evan made one of my longtime wishes come true. <laughs> he let me be a wrestling ring announcer at Renegade <laughs> Stadium. That's one of the things on my bucket list I really wanted to do. He let me do it. So, thank you, Evan. I thank you publicly. I appreciate it. <laughs> thank you all for coming. Please stick around. Maybe you have some questions, uh, and maybe some of you have some answers. This day can make a difference in some one person's life, and uh, we have an opportunity to do that. So get the message out, help us please, and remember, when you shop, when you dine, and even when you give up your time, think local first, and please, this holiday season, give local first. Have a great day.